Hi, this is Takuma and I'm an interaction designer based in Kyoto and in today's tutorial uh, we're gonna learn how to play with particle pack. So last week I released a basic tutorial of how to use particle packs and uh, in today um, it's gonna be a bit advanced like I'm gonna share some tips and tricks on what could be done using particle packs so this is the second one so if you haven't watched the first uh, one please watch that one yep so let's get started um, so this is what we're gonna uh, reach today and I'm gonna uh, in, I explain uh, two of my favorite uh, nodes inside particle pack which is called uh, the skill by distance and also the selection node and I'll step by step explain why I like them and how to use them and so yeah if you, uh, if you haven't followed my last tutorial please follow that one uh, you need this DX11 particle packs made by uh, uh, TMP in your packs folder so if you haven't installed it please install that to follow this tutorial okay so let's get started uh, so I need a new patch here and then uh, I don't want to restart everything so I'll just copy and paste the basic part oh uh, yeah it's very good okay and where is the renderer oh there you are there you go we have the camera connected already uh, I'll just have this axis and grid check which yep okay this is good uh, so um, yeah today uh, I'm go we're gonna be using a three nodes I don't know why this is happening uh, okay I'll just so uh, the first thing first node we'll use is uh, emitter uh, this particle geometry emitter and what it does, it uh, emits a particle based on geometry, which is great. With this one, you can actually map a texture. So um, this one is based on sphere. Uh, if I turn this off, you can see that uh, the texture is mapped on a sphere, which is great. And it's quite hard to do like texture mapping on other nodes. So. I'll use this one. Uh, what I'll do is I'll just uh, copy and paste. Yay. This is very useful. So I just copy and paste the uh, emitter node that I got from the sample pack. And here we go. We have it all working here. Uh, instead of sphere, I want to use a grid. Uh, so I'll just replace this as a grid. Uh, so Oh yeah, it's changing, and I will also put a rotate node here. Uh, so I think it should be this one. Yep. So now it's looking at the y-axis, and then uh, this geometry uh, emitter node is really cool because you can let particles emit uh, based on geometry. For example, if you want a teapot particle emitter, then you can have a teapot emitter, which is great I believe uh, let's just up, turn this update thing on this is not updating the my geometry yeah so now uh, we see a teapot emitting and you can also import uh, your favorite uh, geometry for from different software like Cinema 4D or After Effects like based on OBJ or something like that and uh, file geometry so by using this you can actually connect your favorite uh, your uh, external geometry and put it here and let particles emit from there however uh, it doesn't always work well sometimes it just doesn't work sometimes when I restart it it, it, it doesn't work I mean it, there's some uh, weird things going on with this geometry buffer node but and but instead of that it's really cool and uh, if it's not working make sure that you check this update node uh, update is like if you click uh, make sure you click this update and also sometimes when I turn on and off this apply thing it works uh, to check if it's working or not just make uh, just keep your eyes on this vertex count because sometimes even though you're connecting a geometry that has should have more verticals it's not 
uh, adding any of them so then you have to check inside here and see what's going wrong and things like that but anyway with this default for today's tutorial I'm only going to use this default uh, geometry so it's totally fine yeah the vertex count is now correct and uh, yeah uh, so what I'll be doing today is uh, one node called selection and this one is uh, I think it's one of the most important node uh, inside the uh, inside this particle pack uh, what it does is let's check uh, so you can select uh, like particles with different parameters and add uh, the modifier onto it so this one it has two cubes and it's I think it has uh, so if I turn this off in default it has uh, these particles but it's adding color when it's inside this and outside this so you can do that kind of stuff what I'm going to do today is uh, I'm gonna use the selection node and in here there's two uh, you need to input a selection another selection node and a modifier okay, so if you go to color particle and nodes there's two nodes one called modifier and one called selection so I'm gonna connect the selection here and uh, 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 more nodes, oh, more particles. Okay, now I see everything. So what I'm gonna be doing here is uh, I'm gonna select the white color, and I'll just turn this a bit on higher. And then what I'll do is I'll add, uh, I'll change the color. So I'll use this color modifier, and then I'll connect this to uh, the modifier in. And I need to connect a dynamic buffer color to change the color. So by using this, I'll change the white to, let's see, uh, blue. Okay. So now when the color is white, then uh, I added this modifier called color. So it will change the color to blue. And here you can change the adding method to like col adding color or subtracting color. There's four different types. I just leave it on set. Oh, and let me turn this uh, lower three seconds. And I want uh, these particles to be emitting towards y axis. Okay, so now it's going upwards. And so I just changed the color. But what I wanted to do is I wanted to add the turbulence onto it. So what I would do is I'll just uh, uh, open up the sample patch for the turbulence. I'll just copy and paste this one, make this one here, and add this turbulence to the turbulence modifier to the selection. So by doing this, I I added a uh, turbulence only on white particles. So by using this, you can do quite a lot. Uh, you can uh, if you go to selection node there's a bunch of them like uh you can select nodes depending on its age or you can also select uh it uh, depending on its velocity so if you if you don't want it to go to uh, if you don't want the velocity go to go too high then you can map the velocity and let that particle uh, uh smaller or like less add a less velocity minus velocity and things like that so you can do quite a lot with it so this selection node is very powerful and uh, it's a must use so this is the first uh, trick that i wanted to share selection node and uh next and the last one is the node called uh scaled by distance oh what happened okay uh so what this node does is uh, just I just opened up the sample patch so depending on the camera position so when you go further you don't see the particles because they're all in zero scale but when you get closer you start seeing the particles uh, and this is done by getting the camera position so the scale by distance has this position in and uh, when it gets close when the camera gets closer to the particle it's using this linear spread uh, 
so this is the scale buffer and uh, when it gets closer it's making the particle bigger and uh, the way I want to use this is in Zoppolis so I'll just copy and paste this uh, copy and paste this one uh, here and I'll add it here and I don't need this reverse mode Sorry, the scale is too big. Uh, so just put this one. And then I uh, divide this input with two so that linear spread doesn't show minus. Okay. I'll make this bigger. It's too small right now. Hmm. Oh, I forgot to <laughs> connect the camera position. Okay, so now it's showing the right thing. So this is what I wanted to show. And I'll explain why I like this node. Uh, whenever uh, making a dynamic... Where's the... Oh, depth, buff, depth buffer was off. I had to turn on the depth buffer. Okay, now it looks better. I'll just slightly change this hollow as well. To... Oh, well, anyways. Um, the reason why I like this is because when I'm adding turbulence onto it, sometimes the particles come too close to the camera and uh, like for example if I get close to it, I hate the fact that I see the camera with because of the uh, nearby uh, near plane uh, value, the camera is actually cropping this and I don't like this effect because it, it it feels like you're hitting something and it looks very gamish so the way to avoid that if I use the scale by distance as close as it gets the camera gets the particles get smaller so by using this I can actually uh... oh yeah this is better so when it gets closer we don't see the particles so as closer as it gets the particles get smaller so by this even though you have like a big amount of turbulence for example if i put it five you don't see that the particles are getting too close to the camera instead of that because the scale gets smaller you don't really feel that so when you want to make dynamic movement but in the same time you, you don't want the particles to come too close to the camera and hide all the dynamic parts so if you use this scale by distance node, you can actually make the particle smaller when it gets closer to the camera. So that's a good way. And also, like as the sample patch, uh, if you make if you use this reverse node, you can sort of like make this galaxy kind of effect. So when it goes too far, uh, you don't see anything. But if you get close to the star, you start to see something. And so if you're interested in making this kind of effect, uh, I think this uh, scale by distance is the node that you should be using. And yeah, that was it for today. Of course, there's a lot of different uh, interesting nodes inside uh, this particle pack. And I mean, if I start explaining all of them, it's going to take ages. So I'm not going to explain all of them. But this intersect node is definitely the node that you should play as well. It's really fun. So open up the sample patch and this is what it's showing so just copy and paste and see what it does and also selection by velocity I've been using this quite a lot so this is something that you should use also uh, if you want to use different uh, how do you say if you want to use different uh, modifier on uh, same selection one selection for example if you want to add different um, modifiers on the white particles that are selected here you can also use cons uh, cons I think it should be layer by using this you can add multiple modifier in to the same selection so you don't have to copy different selection and multiply them you can just use this con which is great so yeah that was it for today um uh, yeah thank you for watching and uh see you next time